A sewing machine will work perfectly when it's threaded and the bobbin is put in correctly. On the Singer Quantum Stylist 9960, I'm going to show you the ins and outs of getting a perfectly threaded machine, all the way down to using the needle threader. So first off, you do notice there is an empty bobbin that came with the machine down in this area. So that's one that you can take out. You do have a total of four bobbins, which usually is not enough for me, so definitely look to purchase a few extra packs of bobbins. Trust me, you'll need them sooner than later. Next, quality thread can make the difference on how a sewing machine works. Doesn't matter if you've paid $100 for a machine or $10,000 for a machine. It doesn't, it, the thread is the key. So quality thread will make a difference. If you're using old thread, if you're using grandma's thread, let's not do that. Give this machine good quality threads, like feeding your own body, a good quality food. Okay, so spools come in lots of different sizes. Now, the better quality threads do come where you'll notice that the threads kind of crisscross on the spool. So those threads we actually will put on the horizontal spool pin. If you have thread that has more of a straight layering of the thread, certain brands do that, those brands of thread actually come off the spool best if they are put on a vertical spool pin. So this came out of your accessory bag. You put that right there with the little felt pad and the spool will actually spin on it like that. Okay, so crosswound thread does better if it's laid down and comes off like this. Because we're gonna be laying this down, now we talk about spool caps. So spool caps need to match the size of the spool. So the bigger one for this spool makes sense. You just wanna make sure to get it all the way pushed up against the spool so there's not a gap that the thread can fall into while you're stitching. A smaller spool cap also came with this machine. So if you'll notice, this would make more sense for the smaller spool. Next, we're going to wind a bobbin. And the machine does have kind of a little um, dotted guides of, and they're numbered. So like if I was throwing the machine, we'll follow one, two, three, and then up at four. But for winding a bobbin, we're gonna do one, and then go back here, two, and I'm gonna show you this little important button right here, and I've got an empty bobbin ready. So take your thread, come underneath this part in one, Come around the back of that for two. And then this little, it, little guy is a pretensioner. We're gonna come around the back little finger first and in. And then we need to clip it into this little spring. So I'm gonna hold the thread and click. Once it's underneath this little pretensioner, that's what lets us get a nice smooth fill to the bobbin. Your bobbins have a hole in them, which I'm gonna have you take your thread from the inside of the bobbin and up out of the top of the bobbin. So it looks like it's coming out the flat side. Now I did get it wrapped around, there we go. Um, and I'm gonna push it down onto the bobbin winding spindle. To engage it, you're gonna go ahead and push it to the far right. And you'll notice the screen even switched over to a bobbin winding uh, picture. I'm gonna wrap your, your hands around that thread. Don't let go, step on the foot control, and we're gonna wind. Now, eventually this thread will break off, so you can hold it, but if you wanna stop it, and then after a little bit, you can take your scissors. I don't want any little leftover threads peeking out of the top of that bobbin. So if you do break it off, make sure that there's not a little pigtail waiting for you there. Ah, speed that up, it was about at half speed. Can rewind things slower, fast. Now we're fast. And it will stop when it's done. So just go ahead, fill a nice full bobbin for your work. When it's full, I'm indicated to take my foot off the foot control and then slide the bobbin back. Go ahead and take your scissors and clip the thread. Now here's a little trick. When you take your bobbin off this, it is in the perfect direction to lower directly into the bobbin area. This has a way that the bobbin needs to spin for it to correctly be positioned. So you're gonna notice that as I lift it up, bring it directly over to the bobbin and drop it in. That way, the bobbin's actually spinning counterclockwise and is ready for being put into 
the tension area. If you ever see your bobbin just kind of fl flopping around in your bobbin area, it is not in there correctly. You're going to bring the thread all the way over to about six o'clock and there's a groove. When you put your finger on the bobbin and pull, it kind of goes in between six o'clock and out at like eight o'clock. That's when the thread is in the tension. So I'm gonna let that thread kind of be there. I'm not gonna put the door on just yet because I'm gonna show you how to bring this bobbin thread up right before we start to sew. So let's thread the rest of the machine next. So remember the little pre-tensioner? That is only for winding a bobbin. So we're gonna undo the thread and bring it back to the number one. So we're coming underneath the number one. I'm gonna stop right now and just make sure my presser foot is up. If it's not, these tension discs aren't open and can't accept the thread. So if they're down, not always fun, lift up the foot and continue threading. Step two, bring it here. Step three, there's really just one path, follow the numbers. Now right about here, when you get down and you come up at four, here's my little trick. If you take your thread at the top and at the bottom and give it a little floss, it, I actually felt it go all the way deep into where it needs to go. And then you don't get those big hairy loops on the back of your fabric. It really seals the threading path correctly. So we came up at four, we're coming over the top at five, in on the kind of over on the right, down on the left. There is one guide at the top of the needle. Bring the thread around the guide and then we're ready to use the needle threader. Sometimes I like to lower the presser foot now, and then that gives me a little bit more room for using it. So the needle threader actually comes down, and as you pull it all the way down, it kind of brings a head around where the needle is threaded. So to do this, you're gonna bring the thread underneath the little guide of the needle threader, come all the way down, all the way down, then take your thread to the right, in the little arms, and then lift up, and then as you pull it out, the loop of thread is pulled through the eye of the needle. Once you're here, you do need to bring up the bobbin thread. And since this machine is a computerized machine, we'll use the needle up, down button. So when we touch it, the needle goes down. And when we touch it again, the needle comes up. So you won't see me turning the hand wheel very much while we're doing these videos. The needle, it will either be stopping in the fabric or it'll always be at the highest position. So I'll be using this button all the time. So when I held onto the needle thread and I did that, the loop of thread, which is our bobbin thread, comes up. So I'm gonna just get a hold of it, pull the loop of thread all the way up. Now we can put the little door that covers up the bobbin area on. Lift up the presser foot, slide both the threads down the foot where the little groove is and out the back. So let's see if we actually threaded this correctly. We're gonna take a piece of fabric, fold it in half. We'll always sew on two layers of fabric. Lower down the presser foot, which is right on the inside and go ahead and take our first stitches. Oh, it sounds so pretty. Well, and definitely if you've threaded the machine correctly, it is going to be pretty. So as I stop, my needle stops down, touch the needle up button, needle comes up, lift up the presser foot, and there is a cutter right over here on the back side of the machine. Just bring your thread out, up, and towards you. And it'll cut both the threads at the same time. You also have the scissor button to cut the thread. Touch it once, the needle comes up, the foot is raised by you, and it will pull the thread right out to the back side, and you don't even have to use your scissors or the little cutter on the side. So how do you know if this is supposed to, what it's supposed to look like? You shouldn't be able to tell which side you sewed from. I can see an even stitch both at the top and the bottom. That's because I have the same weight of thread in my bobbin and in the needle. So whenever things are working correctly, we don't have to change anything. Just give the machine good quality thread, put a new needle in, clean out down below if things are not working, make sure the bobbin's in correctly, and those things will be what I would change if things were not working out as smooth as what we just saw.